Welcome back. This lesson covers localization of function, which essentially refers to how different parts of the brain work. More specifically, we will be looking at the cerebral cortex and its four lobes. So we will be defining the structure and function of the frontal lobe, occipital lobe, parietal lobe, and temporal lobe. Let's get started. The first lobe we'll look at is the frontal lobe. As you can probably tell by its name, this lobe is located at the front of the brain and is split into the left and right hemispheres. It stretches all the way back to the central sulcus, which is a narrow fold in the middle of the brain. There are three main parts of the frontal lobe that you need to know. The first is the prefrontal cortex, which is at the front of the frontal lobe. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for executive functions. These are things we do that help us achieve a particular goal. So this includes problem solving, planning, decision making, working memory and self-control. All the things you need to do well at school. Broca's area is found at the frontal lobe's lower left side. The main function of Broca's area is the production of speech as well as writing. The role of Broca's area becomes especially clear in people who have damage to this region of their brains. Although they can understand language and form sentences in their minds, they are unable to communicate their thoughts through comprehensible speech. The last part of the frontal lobe is the primary motor cortex, which is located at the back of the frontal lobe. This part of the brain is in charge of controlling the body's skeletal muscles in order to produce movement. Skeletal muscles include all of the body's muscles in the hands, arms, feet and legs. So this excludes smooth muscles in the organs and cardiac muscles in the heart. The next lobe we'll be explaining is the occipital lobe. This section is found at the very back of the cerebral cortex. It contains the primary visual cortex and its main function is processing vision from the eyes. When light passes the eye, it lands on a structure at the back of the eye called the retina. The retina contains receptors that convert light into electrical impulses. These impulses enable visual stimuli to be sent to the optic nerve and processed in the visual cortex of the brain. It is important to note that there is a relationship between the location of an object in the retina and its location in the visual cortex. Basically, you can think of this as a visual map that's translated from the eye to the brain. So, whatever image is on the retina, it will then be processed in the corresponding location in the visual cortex. This means that information from the left side of each retina will be processed in the left occipital lobe. Also, information from the right side of each retina will be processed in the right occipital lobe. Let's move on to the parietal lobe. In terms of location, the parietal lobe is directly behind the frontal lobe. It contains the somatosensory cortex, which has the main function of receiving and processing senses in the body. This includes all senses except hearing and vision. So when you feel the heat from the sun, for example, that's your somatosensory cortex processing temperature. The somatosensory cortex also processes proprioception, which is the body's position in three-dimensional space. Also, the somatosensory cortex on the left hemisphere processes sensation on the right side of the body, while the somatosensory cortex on the right hemisphere processes the body's left side. So if you start feeling pins and needles on your right leg, then it's the left side of the somatosensory cortex working. There is another structure in the parietal lobe that connects Broca's area and Wernicke's area together. We will cover Wernicke's area in just a second. This structure is called Gershwin's territory and is connected by large bundles of nerve fibres. Gershwin's territory is thought to play an important role in language acquisition, especially in young children. Also, this part of the brain contains neurons that process both auditory and visual stimuli, so it's thought to be an area where the meaning, sound and appearance of words are interpreted. Finally, we have the temporal lobe. This lobe is located on the side of the brain. It has quite a few different functions, including processing hearing, language, and emotion. The part of the temporal lobe that processes hearing is the primary auditory cortex. Sound enters the ear and is converted to electrical impulses in the cochlea, a fluid-filled membrane. 
The cochlea has hair cells which convert sound to impulses, so they can be sent to the auditory nerve and then to the brain. The primary auditory cortex helps us listen to music or understand conversations. It also processes things like the pitch and volume of a sound. The temporal lobe is also home to Wernicke's area, the counterpart to Broca's area. Wernicke's area is in charge of understanding speech and language. People who have damaged their Wernicke's area have trouble following a conversation and comprehending what's being said. But if their Broca's area is still intact, they can still produce speech. It just won't make that much sense. Lastly, the temporal lobe contains a structure called the amygdala. It plays an important role in processing and expressing emotional responses, such as anxiety, pleasure, anger and fear. It does this through the emotional evaluation of situations and potential threats so that we can react to our environment appropriately. Okay, let's wrap up. So, today we learned about the localization of function in the cerebral cortex. We know that the frontal lobe is important for executive functioning, as well as the production of speech in the Broca's area and movement in the primary motor cortex. We then looked at the occipital lobe, which is in charge of processing vision in the primary visual cortex. Next, we explained that the parietal lobe is the site where senses, except vision and hearing, are processed, including touch, temperature, pain and proprioception. Finally, the temporal lobe contains the primary auditory cortex where sounds are interpreted. The temporal lobe also has Wernicke's area, which is important for speech comprehension. There's an additional structure, called Gershwin's territory, that connects both Broca's and Wernicke's area together, which is important for both word processing and language acquisition. See you next time.